Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Well, we're not actually in the workshop today. We're in the studio. It's uh, too hot outside to work, it's about 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the shed is like a sweat box. This is a, a project I've been meaning to get back to for a while. It's a automatic gate sensor. So I can tell remotely when somebody um, opens my gate. Um, this, uh, this unit, or the part that I'm about to describe, gets installed down on the gate, and there's another device installed in the house that uh, communicates via radio signal um, to tell me when somebody opens the gate and sounds a little alarm, or more like a doorbell than an alarm. This, this piece is the, uh, the main logic unit. It's called a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, they're quite cheap. Um, I reckon you'd get one in Australia for like 10 or 12 bucks. Um, they seem to have various prices around the world depending on where you buy them from, but uh, yeah, they're generally pretty cheap. You can get them with Wi-Fi so that you can connect to the internet and read stuff off there. This one is uh, not a Wi-Fi device, but the one I've got mounted in here for the house unit is a Wi-Fi device and I'll, ex I'll explain that how that's used in a moment. But this little fella, um, you write Python programs to go onto it and that lets you control what these little pins do. So you can um, write your program logic to figure out what happens and uh, what you want to send or what you want to turn on and off as different things occur. And they're just done in little modules that can clip together. You can see there's, that's the battery there, there's a row of holes here and a, a row of pins there. And these are built in such a way where you don't need to have um, electronics, there's no soldering or anything. You just plug them together in the order that you want. Also has this little gadget here, which is kind of like a mounting plate. Um, it lets you break out the pins to, to manage other things. And it's got plugs on the side to connect. I think this one connects a battery if you need to, and this one can connect other little modules that do other things. The module I'm going to be connecting is this one here. This is called a magnetometer and it is used to measure movement so I can sense when things change in angles like that. It doesn't basically buy a magnetic compass built in there somehow. It can also sense movement in this plane as well. But we're only interested in the horizontal plane. So that's basically what this is. Um, the hardest part for me was to write the programs for this um, to manage this thing. Sounds like a fairly simple concept, but the more you get into it, the more there is to do. And it took me several months to do, and uh, you might not realize, but I am a programmer. That's what I used to do for work. So a program will be available for you guys to download. Um, I've put it, uh, a link to it in the description, so you'll be able to get hold of that. And if you've got a bit of programming knowledge, you'll have no trouble building your own one. Uh, all you need to do is connect to one of these by a USB cable from your laptop or any computer at all and upload the programs onto it and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty simple interface to use so um, I can do another, another um, video on that but there's lots of stuff around on how to program these little things so Google that and you'll, you'll get a, an idea of how that works. So for now let's just assemble it together. The only thing you have to watch out is you don't put the pieces on back to front. You see this one's got a zero up in that corner there and that's marked where pin zero is and I know that the USB port also goes with pin zero so we'll start with the, the LoRa module. This is the one that does the little radio transmissions and it's got a little battery that comes with it as well. I'll put a link to all these parts and where to buy them. Um, I'm not a, associated with that company, but they're a nice bunch of guys located in Newcastle, Australia, and they'll ship all over the world. And uh, these, this part is all reasonably cheap. I think for the, for the two devices and the LoRa stuff and everything together, I come in at under a hundred bucks. And you could probably do it for less than that. You'll see here it says USB in there. So that tells me that this end 
goes towards the USB end of the device which is also the, the pin zero end. So this one goes into there like that. Here's the middle, middle section of pins. So that goes on there. And then the, again, USB port at, at this end. And that little gadget goes on there if I line all the pins up. And that pushes on there. And that's it for the assembly. Almost it. Now this little one goes into that little port at the back there. And these are all designed to connect things so you can do multiple sensors and things. You can get temperature sensors and all sorts of stuff. And it, you can daisy chain more sensors onto here depending on what you're trying to do. So basically what happens is this device can send radio transmissions to that device and they can go a really long way. It needs to be line of sight unless it's quite short range, like you go from one end of your house to the other without needing line of sight. But once you get longer distances, um, you need to be able to be within vision of each other. And uh, my gate is 300 metres away from the house, so I have no trouble transmitting that far. Um, I've read reports on the web they can go 10, 15 kilometres between these two if, if you're on top of a hill. So um, if you were doing stuff around your place and you needed to go behind a hill or whatever, you could put a third device in the middle and program them to retransmit things from one station to another. You just have to make sure you didn't start a loop and have them sending messages around in circles. But that's the kind of thing that programmers do. So that's this one assembled. Um, all I'm going to do next is mount it into this little box and uh, I'll be able to put this rattle around a bit, this down the back there somewhere like that. I'll mount that on the bottom and the antenna can go in there too. I'll bring you, I'll bring you back when that's all in there. You don't need to watch me do that. I'll probably just do it with a bit of double sided tape. I want to keep this tightly sealed so the rain can't get in and uh, cattle can't get at it because they're generally pretty inquisitive when something new comes along. I'm going to power it by this little solar panel. This little thing's meant to charge mobile phones, I think. It's got a little USB cable on the end, so that'll connect to my USB port on the Pico, and uh, I think that'll easily supply enough power to run this. Um, it uh, has a really low power requirement, and I've gone through gone through my program to optimise it so it's not wasting time running around in circles. Uh, it goes to sleep when nothing's happening, and um, doesn't send radio transmissions when, uh, when it doesn't need to. This little device has got the same uh, Raspberry Pi Pico built into it, um, as well as a little speaker that makes a sound. Uh, it's just something I scrounged up. You see a button on the top there and a, and a little LED. The LED is to indicate uh, how many times the gate has been opened since the last time it's been reset. Basically, you can you know, it'll be one flash, two flashes, three flashes, um, depending on how many times the gate's been opened. Um, the little button here is to reset the number of flashes. So when you say, oh yeah, I know what that was, you can push the button and the light goes back to, um, back to zero again. It's also got a, uh, a little web page built into it, or a web server, so that you can have a look at when the gate was open, what time, um, that kind of thing, and uh, get a history of what's going on. It shows you the voltage of uh, how many uh, how many volts left in the little battery and how the charge is going on it. It just connects to your Wi-Fi and um, gets the time of day from there and uses that to publish the little web page. It's only available on your internal network. It can't get through your router or anything like that. Um, you could do that if you wanted to, but this device doesn't do that. So the next thing is uh, for me to put it all together and uh, I'll give you a look when that's ready and uh, then we'll give it a test. Alrighty, here I am down at the gate. I've mounted this little box on a piece of wood. Made a couple of hooks to go on the back so the cattle can't hook it off the fence. If I put it that far away from the post, when I open the gate it won't swing into the post. So all I'll do now is put a couple of bits of wire through there to hold it on so 
they can't hook it off and my casual passerby can't nick it not that it would be any good without the other half I've got my helpers here just can't stay away <laughs> I think they saw me coming from the other side of the paddock quick he's going to the gate let's get out of here I'll just get that wired on. I've got my little solar panel there. I'll mount that here somewhere. And sooner or later, I'll have to cut some of the branches off this tree so some sun gets on it. About an hour of sun a day ought to be enough. Anyway, I'll do that and I'll uh, show you when it's all done. Little bastards are eating my fence. buggers yeah cop that okay that's got it all mounted up it's in my little solar panel here okay I'll tied the right of the rail there and that goes over to the little box mounted on the gate I put some cable ties on that so they no one can nick it and the cattle won't be able to nose it off there should be all waterproof um, I've given it a test now I get to stroll back up to the house and see whether it recorded one entry. A little panel will get a couple of hours sun in the afternoon. It'll probably only take about an hour to charge the battery up. I think it can run about four days uh, on the battery charge when it's fully charged. So that should be plenty. It doesn't use much power. You can see the little light in there going on and off every 10 seconds. back on again what that means is every 10 seconds it's checks to see whether the gates in the closed or the open position that saves heaps of power so it goes to sleep the rest of the time so it wakes up is the gate closed is the gate open back to sleep again if it's open it sends a little text message up to the house and uh, then it goes back to sleep again I think I've set it to wait for wait for 10 seconds in case it gets a time update from the house Okay guys, I think we can call that one finished. I think it came out okay. Well done if you made it this far through the video. Share it with your mates if you think they'll like it. Click on subscribe if you haven't already and I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Drop me a comment below if you have any questions and let me know if you try and make something similar. I'll include a link below to all the software. If you have any programming skills, you should be able to figure it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. See you.